NASA says right now is a magnificent, significant chance to focus on the planet Venus. This follows the new discovery of possible life on the world. If you somehow end up exploring NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the space agency calling Venus a planet of judgment. In the meantime, Mars became our primary target. Such cautious naming of the most critical planets wasn't an accident during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending ambitious missions to Venus. The stunning planet showed remarkably no opportunities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the USSR. Because of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally understand why. Join us as we check the declassified photographs from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one. Not only did it shift the global direction of the world, but the breakdown of the EMP realm also sank many secrets with it. The fact that the Soviets had a significant pension for secrets, from running the most cryptic intelligence office in the world to being secretive about their actual capabilities regarding extraterrestrial contact, suggests that the former superpower holds numerous untold secrets. Before the United States of America dominated most planetary endeavors in space, the Soviet Union was leading the charge. While the USSR had a long history of both successful and unsuccessful space missions, its most notable focus was on the extremely hostile planet Venus. In Russian, you'd see Venus as Venera, and thus the name of the mission that persevered from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was busy sending its missions to the moon. So, in a way, the Soviets chose to utilize their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the whole fixation on the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets want to use the planet's surface as a plausible and uniquely prearranged power foundation? Or were they perhaps hoping to colonize the planet after searching for any forms of life up there? It's truly challenging to say why the Soviets focused on the hostile planet since they conducted these missions during the Cold War. They weren't entirely open about their intentions. In truth, all we know about the Venusian missions depends on declassified and unarchived data. However, after so much, it's difficult to pinpoint what the Soviets were searching for and if they ever revealed the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once or, indeed, even twice but on various occasions. That is at least clear. The Soviets launched 28 ambitious rockets to the shocking planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while 8 actually landed. Such complicated missions put the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more interested in satellites and innovative technology than searching for life on planets. Its focus was on Mars, which, in turn, wasn't particularly exciting or especially dismal. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts on its record. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, bringing back images and sounds from the surface of that planet. In fact, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment well before the US. So why do we seldom hear about such accomplishments? Recall what we said about the Soviet inclination to maintain secrets. That is just one of many explanations for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the prominent agency was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR, and the office had to be revived under another Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its original records were either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian atmosphere. Still, we can make the most reasonable hypothesis. Maybe the Soviet decision to explore Venus was more about cost-effectiveness than anything else. It isn't to say that the space program didn't know about the planet's actual potential. They were looking for functional water levels, sunlight radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been extraordinarily challenging to evaluate Venus' high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, numerous astronomers do not believe that the hostile planet could support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Additionally, due to its thick air, the atmospheric pressure on Venus is generally about 90 times that of Earth. In any event, 
To overlook the USSR's contribution to the exploration of Venus is like rewriting history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was just to fuel the space race. You see, looking at other more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't entirely off the table. However, it was more costly than sending probes to Venus. Everything basically boils down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the hostile planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such vast differences in distance result in enormous differences in cost. Moreover, if the U.S. hadn't been the world's largest economy, it could never have explored Mars as easily. Different reports suggest that Soviet missions were perilous and had significant technical gaps. Clearly, the rockets weren't prepared to cover vast distances. Also, the organization had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets, so it makes sense why the Soviet space program chose a more feasible and closer mission that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the tale of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move kicked off the space race and maintained its momentum. However, truly fascinating is the reason why the U.S. focused on the moon rather than Venus. NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, and consequently, the U.S. space agency hit a stalemate known as the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it turned out poorly. This was precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and the Soviets were still determined to come out on top in the space race. The best strategy was to take advantage of two specific opportunities. It was a quiet but decisive maneuver. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as the main achievement in the space race, accomplishing something its major rival had failed to do. Regardless of the regime's limited resources and mishandled government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its triumphant position against the U.S. compared to NASA's focus on the moon. This strategic distinction wasn't without hostility. Moreover, tricky propaganda was used to obscure their significant failures with Venus. The American government was prompted to condemn the USSR's obsession with the planet in the media. Venus was dubbed the evil planet, while Mars became mankind's destiny. These names didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate their superiority over the Americans, and they were successful in doing so. The Venera missions are nearly forgotten in current history. However, despite their initial difficulties, those missions were particularly refined, advanced, and ambitious. Without a doubt, at the beginning of the space age, the Venera missions led the way. Thinking back to the 1950s, the Soviets began experimenting with the design and technical details of the probes. For the next 30 years, they proceeded to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside an extremely tumultuous Cold War, the Soviets focused on expediting their resources. Luckily for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the U.S., which turned out to be extraordinarily significant. It allowed them to build larger rockets intended to break through high altitudes and cover critical distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned rockets while the Soviet academic community was working on a series of calculations and assessments to make precise trajectories for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running. For the Soviet space program, nothing was more important than developing advanced instrumentation for these probes. This led to the greatest breakthroughs in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet Union launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully land on the planet's surface. This achievement heightened the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued by failures and stalemates, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite their advancements, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The key issue with this approach was limited design capacity. The Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most sophisticated probes of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering efforts allowed them to achieve the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. 
According to most historians, this was the most exciting decade in the history of space exploration. Without a doubt, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch plans. So why did the Soviet agency choose simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you really need to realize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. The probe was initially launched to study the planet's surface, and that is precisely what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly, the probe entered Venus' atmosphere successfully. The Soviet program continued with Venera 5, but this wasn't simply a repeat of the first launch. The second probe was specifically designed to gather detailed information about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets wanted to survive the obstacles of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced phase of the Venera missions. Everything the USSR had done up to that point was about advancement and improvement. It was about ensuring that their plans and developments were more modern. It was also about perfecting the methods and mechanics of interplanetary travel. For the second decade of the Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most exceptional and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send back data from another planet. By this point, the planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures had already been noted. The Soviets were trying to record Venusian sounds. The next major accomplishment for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 outperformed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture panoramic images of Venus' surface. Simultaneously, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to gather similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the first country to recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has revived its aspirations for Venus missions. Venera is an upcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to examine the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The name Venera represents Venus in Russian. Supposed to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s and plans to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of any current or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and perhaps an inflatable to study the planet's atmosphere in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technical achievements and global ramifications. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human imagination and determination in exploring the universe. Despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles, the Soviets persevered in their mission to uncover the mysteries of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and unwelcoming. One of the most significant aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of robotic probes to study planetary conditions and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's orbit and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data collected by the Venera probes provided crucial insights into Venus' extreme climate, including its scorching temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic environment dominated by carbon dioxide. Furthermore, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration including the development of heat-resistant materials, robust communication systems, and reliable landing techniques. These achievements contributed to subsequent missions to other planets, such as Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had substantial social and political implications. During the space race era, these missions epitomized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding with the Venera missions was about scientific discovery, but it was also about showcasing technological prowess and ideological superiority over the U.S. The global community closely monitored each Venera mission, recognizing their importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. 
This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus's harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus' surface. These images revealed a rugged landscape dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing scientists with vital geological insights into the planet's history and evolution. The panoramic photographs taken by later missions, like Venera 13 and 14, further enriched our understanding of Venus' surface morphology and composition. Despite their triumphs, the Venera missions also encountered their share of failures and challenges. Several missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical breakdowns that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The difficulties of operating in Venus' extreme environment, including temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, posed significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nonetheless, the determination and commitment of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program laid the groundwork for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions continues in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's upcoming Venus mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking forward, the Venera mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by sending advanced instruments to study Venus' atmosphere, surface topography, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's nearest planetary neighbor and expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.